Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Dai Gamma. So in the in the past couple of videos, we actually started dealing with the Basel problem. Uh, and in the last video, I used uh, the classic Fourier series to uh, find the value of sum from n equal to one to infinity of one over n squared. And following from that video, so I would actually recommend watching that. Uh, yesterday's video before uh, coming to this video because it, it's sort of related I am going to use the complex Fourier series this time not the classical one to show that uh, uh, the Basel problem has a value of pi squared over 6 so as always let's get started Okay, so in the last video we dealt with uh, the Fourier series, the classic Fourier series which was basically the process of expressing any function that is periodic on an interval and we normally take neg negative pi and pi as our interval to be defined as some constant plus a linear combination of sines and cosines with uh, a sub n and b sub n as weighted coefficients that depend on n. And now for this video the complex Fourier series is basically the entire process of expressing f of x as the sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of c sub n times e raised to i n x again on negative pi and pi and the reason we've chosen an exponential is because of Euler's identity. We can write this as sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity. C sub n multiplied with cosine of nx plus i sine of nx. And C sub n is sort of acting like a sub n and b sub n at the same time just this time the sine is an imaginary component and the cosine is the real part and uh, this sum is again more expansive because it's going from negative infinity to infinity rather than just one to infinity and as always the formula for calculating c sub n is based on orthogonality of uh, cosine and the sines so we've one over two pi integral from negative pi to pi of f of x multiplied with e to the negative i n x dx and we are actually going to be using this formula to calculate the coefficient c n but for what function now again if you remember my last video we chose x for matters of judgment and experience we chose x and it's actually a matter of trying and erring and figuring out finally what a function of x gives appropriate cn which we can actually use to calculate to solve the, the Basel problem which is I'm defining it as s sum from n equal 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared that's the Basel problem so for what function uh, then using this formula do we get appropriate c sub n such that uh, we have our s somewhere or a similar version of this in uh, the representation of c sub n that's the entire process of using Fourier series and again it comes with lots of practice and experience so let's just agree that f of x equals x is gonna work so Suck on that for now. See you on a fresh page where we actually calculate the C sub n. Okay, so we have f of x being equal to x and C sub n, the formula I've just written down. So now just make the appropriate substitutions in place of f of x. You can just write x and e to the negative i n x dx. 
okay and here's the thing we can calculate this using integration by parts so let's differentiate this simple x while we uh, integrate this exponential so c sub n now just becomes 1 over 2 pi divided by the, the coefficient of whatever was associated with the x in the exponential so negative i n and we have x times e to the negative i n x evaluated from minus pi to pi minus in this minus will be a plus integral from minus pi to pi of e to the negative i n x divided by 2 pi i n dx okay so if I plug in uh, pi we'll have a negative 1 over 2 pi i in as it is we'll have a pi in place of x and we'll have e to the negative i n pi and then for the negative case we'll negative and a negative pi in place of x so that will make a positive pi e to the negative negative positive i n pi and it's actually time to calculate this integral it turns out to be negative e to the i n x over 2 pi i squared i squared is negative 1 so that will be positive n squared evaluated from negative pi to pi okay so e to the i pi is actually negative 1 using Euler's formula if you split this up into cosine of that angle plus i times sine of that angle you have negative 1 but e to the i pi times n can be expressed as e to the i pi the entire thing raised to n so we have negative 1 to the n for both the positive and the negative case so stuff is being repeated so we have negative 2 times negative i whole thing to the n pi over 2 pi i n like that and then when we substitute this in we have negative 1 to the n over 2 pi n squared minus negative 1 to the n over 2 pi n squared because it doesn't matter if it's negative pi or positive i it's still going to be minus 1 to the n these things will cancel out the 2's and the pi's will cancel out here 1 over i is negative i so that negative this negative will go we'll have a minus 1 to the n over n times i that's your c sub n so f of x can now be expressed as sum from n equal negative infinity to infinity of c sub n e to the i n x so x can be expressed as sum from n equal negative infinity to infinity of uh, minus 1 to the n over n uh, along with an i e to the i n x isn't that thrilling isn't that something innovative over this interval of negative pi to pi and that's what's nice about these Fourier series you can write stuff in terms of sines cosines in this case exponentials but you know complex Fourier series like these are uh, useful in electrical engineering and stuff like that because it turns out impedance can be imaginary so we need an exponential like this okay now what do we do with this see you on a fresh page we'll talk about what we're going to do with this a little later okay so we know that x can be expressed in terms of this now and this was a c sub uh, I'm sorry f of x right yeah and c sub n is like exactly this so c sub n is i times negative 1 to the n over n okay so uh, now there's something that's called Parseval's theorem and I'm sure if you've watched uh, yesterday's video until now you would actually remember it from there but that was for the classical Fourier series for the complex Fourier series I'll say the complex Parseval's theorem the statement goes like this so the sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of 
mod c sub n the whole thing squared and we have mods defined because we have, we have complex numbers that we're dealing with is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from negative pi to pi of f of x but the whole thing squared dx that's the statement so I'm substituting in um, this left hand side we have here so mod of i times negative 1 to the n over n but the whole thing squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi of x squared dx so uh, with the mod the i and whatever was making this entire thing negative will just be ignored so we'll have sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of uh, I believe 1 over n squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi and this turns out to be x cubed over 3 evaluated from minus pi to pi now noticing this uh, we have we can split this up into sum from n equals negative infinity to say negative 1 1 over n squared plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus the 0 case you know we didn't include 0 but 0 should be included so 1 over 0 for n equals 0 but we're going to ignore n equals 0 case otherwise you know it will diverge so we're going to assume that uh, c sub n e is equal to 0 for n e is equal to 0 we just have a 0 for the 0 case all that is equal to 1 over 2 pi uh, pi cubed over 3 minus negative pi the whole thing cubed over 3 that is the right hand side so now since n squared or an even power on n even on a region of negativity it, it doesn't matter because n squared is ma making the entire sum and to be even so this is just the same thing as this and this is s so we have 2s over here 2s is equal to 1 over 2 pi we have pi cubed over 3 negative negative positive pi cubed over 3 so 2s is 1 over 2 pi 2 pi cubed over 3 so the 2's will cancel the pi's will cancel to pi squares s is therefore pi squared over 3 times 2 which is pi squared over 6 and what is s sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared the Basel problem again marvelous right just how the pi drops in and uh, the pi drops in because of this periodicity over here because of which we have these 1 over 2 pi factors and this integral over negative pi to phi and, and, and stuff like that that's that's the reason this pi drops in like that but in any case it, it's a really elegant answer I hope you learnt a lot in this video guys please like share and subscribe to my channel whenever you can and I think that's it for this video so guys please like share and subscribe as I already said and I'm stressing this time because it's really important I need one more sub I have 99 subscribers now I need you know like the hundred celebration but in, in any case uh, thank you guys for your ongoing support it's really been uh, hell of a journey please stay tuned for more content and uh, more ways to destroy the basel problem so for now stay home stay safe keep doing math peace out gamma di gamma signing off